It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everyone! Ah! Alright, what's up guys? It's Lane here with uh, Carson. Yes, sir. Uh, real quick, we'll go over our betting results from last week, and then we'll head into uh, our full card picks. So if you want to skip ahead, go to those time markers um, and get to the full card picks for uh, Rodriguez versus Lemos. But uh, here we go on uh, what ended up being one of the one of the worst cards I feel like I've watched in a while. Um, you might have to pull up some of the fights here and remind me of some of them. I want to talk about some of the other ones as well. But minus 3.17 units. I mean, it's kind of even out of our control in this matter. So, you know, obviously to start off, Dustin J- Jacoby um, was clearly the winner. I mean, I think everyone can agree on it. I know there's like these people trying to always say close fights aren't robberies, but two rounds were painfully obvious. I think it's just the fact that Jacoby- the live odds after the fir- the first two rounds was minus one thousand one hundred for Jacoby. Right, and I think it's just that people wear damage on their face different. Like, Jacoby's been in so many different fights, his swelling in his face acted up a little bit more. I I, I don't know. It, it, what are you going to fucking do about these robberies? I don't, I don't know. We're lucky we didn't have money on Piotr Jan for that that fight last week, but... Yeah, and that stupid same judge, Ben Cartledge. Ben whatever. Cartledge, yeah. Uh, next, Fuck you, dude. <laughs> next bet... We have Calvin Cater. We had him. I mean, what are you supposed to do? He was losing round one. I can admit that. Um, we, I said it in the video. I thought he would lose the first two. Exactly, exactly. And and he lost it, and he tore, and whatever, whatever. That's now 6.7 units we've lost on main event injuries. 6.7 just this year. We have been on the losing side of every main event injury, too. Um, just the way she goes. Um, and that, that killed two of our plays the start to round four. Yeah. So, Phil Halls, Roman Delize, I really enjoyed that knockout. I picked Phil Halls in that fight, but the dude, a little cocky, um, and I don't know what happened with them not stopping the fight due to his leg, but he got slept pretty good. His head movement, even when he's injured, obviously, he's going to get slept pretty bad. Um, then we had the Joseph Holmes one, which... You know, we were both surprised by that one finished. Uh, I'll let you talk about it. Yeah, I mean, Holmes has never been finished before. And then John and Park hasn't had a finish in the UFC. He's only been finished in the UFC, and we thought the clear path to victory was Holmes by decision. Um, it just seemed like, or Park by decision, my bad. It just seemed like Holmes uh, gave up in that fight. I mean, yeah, Park's control was really good, but typically when you're that big of a fighter in Holmes, you usually see that they can hold their own on the ground or stop submissions. I guess it wasn't the case. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm not ashamed of that bet. And then to polish it off, um, Max Griffin and Tim Means, a little sketchy, knockdowns, but got to round three. And again, the Calvin Tater one, that one felt like it was going to go to the round four, in my opinion. There was no hugely damaging strikes in the first first round, but whatever. Oh, those guys are terrible. What are you supposed to do? Betting on main events must be a curse. Um, but yeah, let's. All get... of them were really close odds to, like nearly pickums. Right, right. <clears throat> well, let's get into the picks. Okay, for the first fight of the night, we have Ram- Ramona Pasquale versus Tamaris Vidal. Um, in this one, you know. Uh, Ramona Pasquale is, I don't think, a horrible fighter, but so this is a fight at 135, and I really debate whether she can make 135. I believe, you might have to check on this for me, Carson, um, that her fight with Jocelyn Edwards got kicked up a weight class or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I was at 145. I, I Both just, her UFC fights have been at 145. I might have to check out the Instagram and see if she's like on a reasonable weight for this because... Uh, she's a big girl, especially in the hips. Um, Tamaris Vidal is a young fighter here. Um, I've seen her fight against Aylin Perez. Um, she had a good, uh, 
she had a good go before uh, Perez kept on kneeing her in the groin and in the face and pretty much making all the disqualifications. Um, but she actually defended herself most of the fight. She has uh, not the best takedown defense, but fights her for position on the ground. And again, this is a younger fighter getting older. Ramona Pasquale's got no damaging strikes. Um, I'm just thinking of it all by decision here. Um, I think she could out uh, strike her on the feet. A little bit more damage, like I said. And uh, again, the weight the weight difference is the big thing. Don't bet this fight. I, I don't even like the over two and a half. So uh, do not, yeah, do not bet women's fight unless it's Zhang Whitley. <laughs> all right, <laughs> remember me. And she's, um, yeah, she's 24 um, compared to Pasquale's 34, so 10 year uh, age difference there. Right, uh, Vidal by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Jake Hadley versus Carlos Candelario. Um, a bit of a sketchy fight if I'm just looking at it from the odds perspective with uh, both of these two's careers. Um, I got Jake Hadley who just fought Rodrigo Nascimento. Um, I don't, I don't want to say he had a horrible fight IQ, but he stayed in bottom bottom position a large part of the fight. Really got dominated in the ground game. He's a honestly even a little bit small for the. 125 division, which sounds a little bit weird to say, but he's really thin, but he's also young. Um, I will put a pick on Hadley here, but this is honestly a sketchy fight. Um, his hands look pretty good. His kicks look pretty good. He's got good jujitsu off his back. He's always busy. Um, and I think that he's not going to be facing the similar strength up in an opponent here against like Rodrigo Nascimento, where he could just take total control of Hadley on the ground. Uh, Candelario will fight for positions, though. Um, If you look at that fight with Tatsuru Taira, you know, he gave uh, Tatsuru Taira more problems than CJ Vergara did. Um, It's not to say that Taira did a bad job in that fight, but uh, I just felt like uh, Candelario reversed position pretty well, um, fought to get to his feet a couple times, um... And then his loss against Victor Aldebrano on the Contender Series doesn't look as bad anymore with uh, Aldebrano having a good win recently. Um, it, I just see this fight as a decision for Hadley, but this is a sketchy fight, like I said. It it probably will be pretty high pace, and it'll lead to some grappling, um, but I don't think these guys will have enough strength, really, to get each other out of there. So I like yeah, Hadley. Candelario has never been finished before. Um, Tyra can get him out of there. It just seems weird that Hadley would be minus 275, which I think um, Tyra was like minus 200 or minus 225 against Candelario. I mean, yeah, and Tyra dominated it, but it was still like there's some positional changes that could have been really yeah. a detriment for his game. Um, I mean, all I see in this fight is probably an over two and a half or start round three play. Um, that's what I think I'm kind of keen on, but. Uh, yeah, two tough guys. I think Candelaria's got better boxing, but Hadley might have better distance kicking. Um, but yeah, I like Candelar or uh, eh, Hadley by decision here. Okay, for the next fight, we have Johnny Munoz Jr. versus Ludovic Cholan. Um, for this fight, I like Johnny Munoz Jr. a lot better here. Um, if you've watched Ludovic's fights, I mean, from tough, from his first fight in the UFC, um... He really has zero damage in his game. He He's a grappler, and he's only a grappler and doesn't seem to go for finishes. Uh, I mean, he's, he does have some uh, a knockout here on his record, but if you actually watch his fights, and especially on tough, the dude just likes to grab people, um, doesn't really advance, advance position on the ground. Um, his best hope for this fight would be taking down Johnny Munoz Jr., and uh, it'd have to just be holding him on the ground. Johnny being a uh, a good jujitsu guy here, I think he's going to have better hands in the stand up. Just touching him at range. Uh, his last knockout's a little bit concerning against Tony Gravely, but I like his kicks at distance. Um, he can use teep kicks, jab. I think just overall, everything is in uh, Munoz's favor here, other than the base wrestling, and that's the big question. So uh, I Do like you think Munoz will get a finish here. Uh, no. I think I think this is a decision fight. Um, he does have a couple finishes, submissions recently, but uh, I, 
I think Ludovic will be able to defend himself on the ground here. Jack Shore couldn't find a finish on uh, Ludovic as well. So yeah, Ludovic's never been been finished before. So right. I, like that. I feel like the heights are a little bit off here. I think Munoz will be the bigger fighter, but uh, um, yeah, John Munoz by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Jin Yufrey versus Pollyanna Viana. For this fight, I just want to speed run this prediction because this fight doesn't really matter to me, although Piana Viana is pretty cute. Um, for this fight, we're going to pick Jin Yufrey by decision because uh, I think she'll be have the better striking here, and if she goes into uh, uh, wrestling with uh, Pollyanna Viana, I think she'll hold top control and win this fight. Uh, Pollyanna Viana has some good striking, but other than that, uh, kind of gets taken out on the ground, lays on her back, does have some submissions, but not the best. Jinu Frey got robbed in her last fight. That's all I really have to say. Jinu Frey by decision. And Vianna is content with laying on her back. I mean, it's not the best look. You destroyed my speed it. run. Anyway. <laughs> Frey by decision. Yes, sir. Okay, for the next fight, we have Mario Batista versus Benito Lopez. <sighs> Slow down. Uh, for this one... I am going straight out to pick uh, Mario Batista. Uh, Benito Lopez taking a huge break here. Uh, three years off. I know he's a little bit of a younger guy, but you question commitment and uh, what they're doing. Uh, Mario Batista is fully committed to this game, um, made a ton of improvements in his most recent fights. Um, and uh, I, I just like Mario Batista's overall game here. We can talk about every aspect. Um, the, you know, the Brian Kelleher fight put a pace on him uh, until he got it to the ground and found a quick submission. Um, Jay Perrin controlled that fight. Uh, Trevin Jones controlled that fight until a single punch. Um, And if you're looking at Mario Batista, this dude has put on a ton of weight for this weight class. Um, I think he's going to be a lot stronger than Benito Lopez here. And I think he's actually going to find a submission. I think he could get done striking or um, with the wrestling. But I think that his overall size will lead to either a takedown or a club and sub, which will be a submission. So, um, yeah, I liked uh, Batista submission round one. You like that call? Yes, sir. Okay, for the next fight, we have Miranda Maverick versus Shayna Young. Once again, a chick fight. We have a huge favorite, um, Miranda Maverick, the girl that looks like Robbie from uh, the Cobra Kai versus... Uh, Shayna Young, um, Shayna Young kind of got a nice fluke win versus Gina Mazzani, who's really not the best fighter, um, but overall kind of gets beat up on a resume. Miranda uh, Ma- Maverick's offensive wrestling should be a lot better here. Again, super young fighter. I, I shouldn't say super young. 25, getting older, getting better. Um, I like a submission. I think that's what we called last time. So, Yes, sir. I'm um, pretty sure we did say submission yeah you said this fight was uh canceled due to a hospitalization of uh shana young i kind of forgot because it happened a while ago but yeah uh, that was on the usman edwards card yeah uh, it's it's whatever i i I mean obviously i feel like marina maverick a pretty easy one here uh yeah marina maverick submission round one okay for the next fight we have Darnik Minner versus uh, Shailen Nurbadameki. Uh, uh, Shailen facing uh, TJ Brown, and which a lot of people remember bet TJ Brown on and sweat. Oh, I wanted to mention in our bets thing just the Chase Hooper fight, but we called it a little bit. We we picked Hooper, but we totally said you should fade Hooper. I just had to mention that. I said I wasn't betting him because... We knew, we knew. I mean, it, he was still an obvious pick, but we knew he wasn't that good. Uh, don't want to flex too much. We still picked him. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we'll get back on topic. Um, Shylin, strong wrestling versus TJ Brown. Um, kind of inactive striker, but Minner here is kind of a kill-or-be-killed fighter. Um he just goes uh, full out for um, submissions, uh, all this stuff, and I, I think he's just gonna be not quite as strong here as Shylin in this fight. Uh, again, the line is a little bit crazy here for uh, Shylin. He's a uh, minus two hundred five, it says here, but uh, Minner could you know pull a quick guillotine, twitch submission on anybody. Um, what makes me nervous on the feet for Shylin too is that. Uh, Minner might just be a little bit faster than him, but 
I mean, this this fight looks like it's not going to go the distance. Um, yeah, Menner's always live for for a submission win. He, he has a crazy uh, triangle choke against Terrence McKinney a minute into the the round there. So I mean, he's always live, but I think Shailen will. We'll find a finisher. He's got more power in his hands and top control in wrestling. Um, Minner did survive Ryan Hall, but uh, uh, overall he got dominated in positions and kind of stuck around with the bare bones chokes until he could get to a decision. So, uh, yeah, Shylin, um, I'm thinking uh, uh, KO in round two. You like that? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, for the next fight, we have Jailton Almeida versus Maxim Grishin. Um, I'm honestly a little bit surprised by the line for Jailton Almeida, but in a way, also not. Um, you know, minus 670 is a huge price to pay. That's like Dagestani price to pay for wrestlers. Um, you usually don't see that with Brazilians. Um, I like I like his wrestling still better here. Grishin, still a very quality fighter, but... Uh, um, I think he'll get controlled here on the ground, and it, if it stays on the feet, I think Almeida still has a chance, although Grishin is very sound on the feet. Um, I, I see a submission coming probably in rounds one or two. Um, I like two, just I think Grishin could be tough enough to survive that first round. Um, do you like that? Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to say with this one. You know, Ty, Tybora took down... Um, Grishin, but that was also a huge weight difference. I, I just don't understand the price here for Jailton. I'd kind of advise not to throw in a parlay, maybe. I, I might sound like a fool for saying it. He might just get a quick finish, but... Um, yeah, Grisham hasn't been finished since 2016 against Magomed Ankalaev, which, I mean... Yeah. On. And you're talking about quality of opponents. Um, I'm not going to say Grishin has the best resume, but um, I'd say the hardest fight Almeida's had is his contender series fight. Um, other than that, it's just been steamrolling people. So uh, we'll take. I'll take uh, Jailton Almeida here by decision. All right. By decision. It's by submission. Round two. Okay. For the next fight, we have Mark Madsen versus Grant Dawson. Uh, Mark Madsen. Uh, we won the bet on him, I think, yeah, five months ago against Vic Pichel. Um Close fight, but uh, he pulled it off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 1-1 heading into the third, and then Madsen got a takedown. Yeah, the, the guy the guy thinks he's getting a, thinks he's on his way to a title shot. He's 38 years old, Greco-Roman wrestling, which I'm not going to say is the worst form of wrestling, but it's kind of it's not the same as freestyle wrestler um, credentials. Um, fought, uh, wrestled in the Olympics, but uh, Grant Dawson looked extremely strong in his last fight against Jared Gordon. The dude um, is only improving from what I can see. His striking still has some ways to co- come, but even if this goes up to the ground, uh, Mark Madsen's going to have to work for positions here, because Grant Dawson will not stop moving, and Madsen's been known to slow down in these fights, especially if Dawson defends, like, two takedowns, uh, Madsen will already start feeling it, and uh, I like uh, I like a Grant Dawson submission, to be honest here. I think he's going to find one. Yeah, he's also 10 years younger than than Mark Madsen, so that and, could play a factor. And he's got some power in his hands. Uh, Mark Madsen really doesn't have much finishing ability. He kind of just, for the most part, rides to a decision for these last couple, but yeah. yeah. I like uh, Grant Dawson by submission here. Okay, for the next fight, we have Tadir Ulenbekov versus Nate Maness. A bit of a sweaty fight here. Um, I think Nate Maness might have actually slightly better stand-up than Tadir. Um, Tadir's got pretty slow hands for a flyweight, but uses very straight punches. He doesn't really throw many looping punches, so he kind of saves some of his, some of his ability with a jab and a, or just a one-two. Um, Nate Maness, though, this is a cut from 135 to 125, which historically has done really bad. Um, this dude's 5'10", and uh, if, you, if you've seen him fight before, very low body fat already. I, I don't know how this cut 
is gonna gonna happen for him. Um, and I could even see a cancellation possibly from this fight. Um, and I'm picking Ulan Bekov, and I'm gonna pick him by knockout, even though that's not his method because of this cut. Um, I think that you know we've seen uh, people make this cut to flyweight and then get dusted. Uh, Tadir doesn't have the best hands, but if you actually watch his fight with Tim Elliott, which he actually should have won, or maybe tied, I can't remember if there's a point deduction problem in that fight as well, but he touched up um, Tim Elliott with his hands in that fight. He got dropped once, but Tim Elliott's a strange fighter for most people to face. He's kind of the litmus test of the flyweight division. And then Nate Maness can't take away his loss against Umar Nurmagomedov. Um, you know, beat Tony Gravely, but technically lost because he got saved by the bell in the first round. Um, he's not a bad fighter, but uh, I think that Tadir can stay safe unless Maness gets early takedowns, but Tadir has a good get-up game. Um, I think most people probably pick decision for this fight, but I, I think that this will lead to a knockout. You like that call? Yeah, I like him. All right, Tadir by knockout in round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Josh Parson versus Chase Sherman. Um, why is this on the main card? Yeah, it's on the main card, man. Like, why the fuck are these still on the main card? Um, we just watched Jared Vandera and Acosta have a goddamn horrible fight. Um, what are they you just, talking about? Those they love things. just putting the sacks of shit on the main card. Um, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of it, man. It's. Um, we gotta watch this one. I don't care who wins. Uh, all I know is it should be for an interim title belt. Um, and I'm going with Chase Sherman because um, Josh doesn't really have good stand up. He was getting beat up by Alan Badeau, who also is bad, until it led to Alan Badeau getting exhausted and then <laughs> punched out. I mean, you you can if you really think you can predict these heavyweight fights, you're a god. Because, like, I, I I mean, like, this is just a toss-up. Um, Dante Mays lost to him. Dante Mays isn't good. Um, I, I don't know. There's not many great wins on either of these guys' as resumes, unless you call Jared Vandera good, uh, which you can't. Um, I mean, if you look at the way, obviously, Chase Sherman loses, it's going to the ground. Josh Parson doesn't really have a great takedown, but it's just, like... I'm going to put all my weight on you until you fall over kind of thing. So I'm going to pick knockout round two for Chase Sherman, but we'll fucking see, man. Um, I don't know. What, get your ice cream for this fight. Eat up, gain some calories, and uh, enjoy the show, I guess. Okay, for the next fight, we have Neil Magny versus Daniel Rodriguez. Really close fight to call here. Neil Magny... Again, like we kind of talked about uh, Tim Elliott, he's kind of the litmus test of the welterweight division. Um, he has some credible wins, obviously, over, you know, uh, the Leech, um, Jeff Neal, some other people, but I've, I feel like I've just noticed he's deteriorating. I feel like he is getting slower in these fights. I know he fought Shavkat. I'm not taking that away from him. But um, the Matt Griffin fight was a bit of a red flag had really bad head movement in that fight. Um, started real slow and then sped up the fight. Um, I'm thinking Rodriguez by decision. I think that he wins the striking battle in rounds one and two, and then Magni takes over three. You're obviously looking at a close fight here. Betting a split decision doesn't seem like a bad decision here either. Um, and then on the D-Rod side, lost against the Leech. Um... And obviously had some time off before that, but he's fought Kevin Lee. He really hasn't fought many of these people who take over the clinch like Neil Magny does, but it's a matter of getting into that range, and Daniel Rodriguez loves being at range. He's facing a big reach disadvantage and a little bit of a height disadvantage, but I think he's going to be strong enough to keep his distance. He's shown good takedown defense in his career. Um... And I think he's he's gonna pull this one off against Neil Magny here. Uh, you like you got anything know, about I think this? Magny one? can be able to. I think Magny. I think Magny can can be able to get up in the clinch and hold him for rounds two and three. 
He always, Neil Magny always starts slow, loses the first round, and then comes back and usually wins two and three. Yeah, that's the big question. Does he win round two? That's that's where I'm looking at this fight. Um, yeah. And I think I think D Rod will take round two, but we'll see. I mean, it's gonna be a real close fight. I haven't decided if I'm gonna bet it yet or not. I I looked at I wanted to bet D Rod last time, but it got pulled off. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe a, a way ends. I'll have to make a decision. But uh, I like D Rod here by decision. Okay, and for the main event, we have Marina Rodriguez versus Amanda Lemos. Marina Rodriguez, uh, I haven't picked against her for her time in the UFC. She's done pretty damn well. Um, um, good wins over Mackenzie Dern. Yao Zhanan was a very close fight. Could have gone either way. I got. I can't remember exactly how I scored the fight, but it was very close. Um, got, actually took a good amount of damage in her Michelle Watterson fight. But I do like her striking overall here. Um, Amanda Lemos, very good at just uh, stalking opponents, similar to Davison Figueredo, just kind of takes one step forward at a time and plants that that hand when they're ready for it. Marina Rodriguez, though, always going forward um, and trying to do damage with her striking. Um, Amanda Lemos... Good win against over Michelle Watterson, although she had some shaky moments, in my opinion, still in that fight. Lost just to Jessica Andrade. Um, got the robbery win over Angela Hill. It's hard to say exactly how this one goes. Amanda Lemos is pretty explosive, but Rodriguez's takedown defense is pretty decent. I like Marina Rodriguez here. What do you think about this fight? Yeah, I like Rodriguez as well. Um, not, what, what's the line in this fight? Minus 200, pretty much, Marina Rodriguez. Yeah, Yeah, that's probably what I'd set it at as well. I think Lamos is live in rounds one and two, and then after that I see um, her fading. Right. I don't think, yeah, the Hill decision, and then then most of her fights are usually rounds one or two, she gets finished. She finishes or gets finished. Right. I I think Amanda... um, here she has to get a submission in one of the first two rounds um if this was a three round fight it would favor amanda lamos heavily but in this five round fight uh rodriguez has that experience and i think that uh i think uh marina rodriguez actually finds a knockout here and i'm thinking around four um even the, the yao Jianan fight round three she just keeps coming forward puts the pressure on and she swings heavy um and, and, and I think after a certain amount of time, it's going to break Lemos, and it'll lead to a finish. So uh, I'm going to say KO round four. Hopefully we get a finish for this chick event. We've kind of had uh, two chick main events in a row that have been not the best and kind of hope for a finish. But uh, I like Mar- Marina Rodriguez here. KO round four. Okay, guys. Uh, these were all our picks for the fight night um we know we lost on the ufc but we also made we lost 3.17 but then we made 3.2 on nfl the following day so it kind of balances out um it's again those prediction videos for nfl beat out on wednesday the bets for uh ufc on thursday and then uh you know same routine all over again and uh, stay tuned to those NFL bit bets as well if we're going to keep on do, uh, keep on rolling with them. So uh, anything else from you? Uh, next pay-per-view is next week, so that's already creeping up. Adesanya, Pereira, um, looking forward to that. And, hey, maybe um, we sneak out a video by Friday for that because it would help my schedule. We'll see. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it. All right. It'll be later, y'all. Peace. Peace. I know, it doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. The old doubt to me I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now.